post lunch. Uh, so, we will try to be as interactive as possible. Uh, what I intend to uh, speak today is about Docker, how is it uh, going to be relevant uh, in DevOps scenario and that is what I intend to cover in the next uh, half an hour. So, in the past, okay. past uh, year or so, you, uh, many of us would have seen a lot of announcements in the press. There is a kind of a rush to support Docker. Uh, Google had uh, uh, supported, uh, no, announced support for a Docker. They also open sourced, they also open sourced the uh, container engine. Uh, OpenShift also has embraced uh, Docker. Uh, Microsoft also has made announcement to support Docker. Uh, and in fact, I, I saw the announcement on 26th March, even Puppet Lab is extending a support. Salt is uh, extending a support. So there is a lot of buzz uh, in the market uh, around Docker uh, to support Docker. So the whole uh, idea of this uh, half an hour talk is around examining what exactly is the role, uh, how exactly it fits into the DevOps scenario and what kind of cautions, precautions we should probably take before we do a full adoption. That is the, uh, that's the whole thing that I will uh, cover in the next uh, 20 minutes. So, how many of you have actually heard about Docker? Many of you. Uh, so, what do you uh, what do you say about Docker? I mean, what is your uh, idea about Docker? Is it is it like a uh, light VM? Okay. Yeah, because I I heard somebody talking about light VM in the morning, so that's the reason I wanted to check. Uh, yes, it is a virtualization, but it is slightly different. Uh, so, I, I would not say it is really a light VM, it is a slightly different way of doing a So, let us uh, no, let us understand what, what Docker is all about. Uh, Docker site, if you go, uh, it says uh, it is an open platform for developers and system administrators to build, ship and run distributed applications. Now, that is a very uh, a nice definition, but what exactly does it do? Uh, so, that is something that I think you will have to go through the documentation to understand what exactly it does. Uh, so, if we look at it, it actually packages the application, its dependencies in a sort of a virtual container and it, you can run it on a, any Linux machine. Uh, so, be it on a cloud, be it on a, a bare metal could be in a you know, pri private, public, any kind of a cloud model that we can talk about. The other interesting part is it also automates the deployment of application inside a container. So, uh, what happens here, there is a kind of a layer of abstraction uh, that it provides. Now, per se, the operating system level virtualization uh, technology itself is not new. Uh, it was existing before. So, as we see, uh, this is the, uh, it, it may be a very crude analogy, but what it does is, it essentially cheats the application to say that yes, there is a OS, uh, unlike the hardware virtualization where you talk about the uh, no, uh, VMware of the things. It is not a new concept. Solaris had it. Even uh, IBM AX had it. On the Linux side, there was a OpenVH, there was a LXC. And as you can see, these were released at least about 7 to 8 years back. So, why it was not popular? Uh, I think uh, Dr. Skill uh, in the morning talked about Rolls Royce and a Ford, something similar here. What Docker has provided is actually for a common developer, 
it has made the Linux containers easier. So, he can do it with a simple workflow. So, that is where the docker is coming into picture. Previously also it was kind of a specialized skill if you want to uh, have a containerized system, you need specialized skill to create those containers. With docker there is a ease, uh, uh, a developer with some little bit of knowledge on the system admin side can actually create a container. So, that is the difference of what existed maybe 10 years back and what exists today through docker. So, there are two aspects of it. Uh, the Linux kernel uh, has essentially two features. One is the C group, other one is the namespace. Essentially to isolate things uh, in a containerized system. So, before I dwell into what kind of experimentation we did, uh, I would like to uh, know also tell you a context in which we did this experimentation. So far, uh, all of us have talked about continuous delivery, continuous integration, but nobody has talked about application dependencies. You really want to move the applications much quicker, faster. What if you know, there are certain dependencies, certain dependent applications uh, which rely on libraries. Now, if you want to upgrade one library, you pro probably end up actually modifying those applications and you really do not want to touch all the applications at that point in time. So, in fact, we were uh, doing a sort of a proof of concept for one of the customers who had this idea of, I would not say a continuous uh, deployment, but rather he wanted to really accelerate the cycle of deploying the applications. And that is where you now all uh, automation that we could think of was done. Now, there was certainly application level uh, dependency when you want to make some changes in the application, essentially upgrade it to use a new uh, set of libraries. Uh, there were other applications which they did not want to touch, but they were forced to actually make changes. Now, though there is a noble uh, objective of actually reducing the uh, cycle, we were not really able to achieve that, because there were too many application level dependencies, even though we did not want to really upgrade all the applications at the same time. So, that is where we started actually exploring, can we use containers and see whether we can actually solve this problem. Uh, so, how does uh, docker differ uh, uh, with respect to a, a typical virtualized environment? So, if we look at it uh, on a typical hardware virtualization, you will have a hypervisor and then on top of it there is a uh, guest OS and on top of it you have the libraries and the application. So, for each of the VMs you have a separate guest OS. So, it may not be a really very efficient use of the resources. What docker does, it, it provides you a dockerized environment. What I mean here is there is a host OS and then there is a docker engine and you can just put those containers there. Now, I, though I have depicted here the libraries and application as a one single container. Now, you might have a situation where you might have a common library. So, maybe multiple containers can also use those common libraries. So, that kind of thing is possible with it. So, uh, this is a major difference between a typical hardware uh, based virtualization versus what docker provides as a container based virtualization. Again, I am taking a, a example of a docker here. There are other uh, competing products also equivalent uh, from core OS, they also provide the containerized uh, things. So, essentially uh, docker has two components, one is the docker engine and third, uh, second one is docker hub. Docker hub is essentially a repository of docker images, the base approved images uh, can be stored in that. Again, uh, this could be a public thing, docker also has uh, ability. Uh, they, they are providing this, uh, if you want to do it within your firewall also, you can have that repository inside. So, there is a hub and then there is an engine which will allow you to uh, deploy the containers. As I was talking about the context, uh, what we did was we essentially look, took scenarios which are more applicable in our day to day life. Two distinct applications, 
common libraries, there are dependencies, uh, that is one. Second one we took is two versions of the same application. When I say two versions, it is not just the functional upgrade, it is also I am upgrading the, the uh, underlying libraries and trying to utilize that. So, that was one case. The other case that we wanted to look at was whether I can deploy this application across platforms in a very seamless manner. I do not want to really recreate that environment on multiple clouds or on premise. So, let us say I want to have a development environment on premise and I want to look at, you know, deploy it on let us say Amazon or Google or Microsoft. How do I do that? I, can I do that it with one click? That is something that we wanted to really experiment and see how uh, for a developer the life is easy. We talk about DevOps, so where we talk about development and operations people collaborating with each other. But this is one of the aspects that we need to look at, how can I make my ops life also easier. So, those are some of the things that we looked at and these are the scenarios that we had taken into account, because we wanted to really address that, how do we actually uh, take care of application dependencies, still satisfying a business need of moving something into production really early. Uh, I just want to you know, uh, give a view here, why we are uh, talking about this particular test scenarios. We are not talking about applications, which are uh, kind of cloud native applications. We are talking about enterprise applications, which are already developed. Can I really you know, do something about it? Because many of the enterprises will have that kind of legacy baggage. What we observed, and uh, no, before I go to the observation, uh, let me also explain how exactly we did it. Okay. So, for a developer, uh, he was using his laptop. Uh, we had taken the Ubuntu image, uh, and that that was essentially a base image. And we had built the container on that. So, there is an app server, there is a dependency setting, up to the network uh, level things. We have built this layer. So, this is essentially is what the Docker file contained for that particular container. Now, certainly you can run it on the developer's machine with the Docker engine. He can very well test that. But then, if I want to take it to another, uh, another organization, let us say for assurance perspective, or you want to uh, deploy it in some other platform, we also took the same thing and we deployed it on two platforms, one on a Google platform, other one on Amazon platform. For Google, we had used the Google container optimized image. Google has its another container engine also. So, we had used the container optimized image and the OS image is, was Debian. Okay, Ubuntu and Debian, they are uh, the same roots. So, but there is a different OS that we had used here and we had used a Docker runtime. Same thing we did with Amazon also, where uh, we had used the predefined configuration as Docker and deployed it. Now, you will be surprised that this was like a one click deploy. The only change that we made was on the firewall, nothing else. We just uh, uh, accessed those respective clouds and took the Docker image from a hub and deployed it. So, it was just one click for even you no know, deploying it across multiple platforms and we did not have to make any changes. So, this, this was something that was quite interesting for us. Our observations around this multiple experiments where uh, we could upgrade the libraries without disturbing the running containers. We are also able to launch multiple versions of the same application with conflicting dependencies in on the same machine or the same host essentially. Uh, where uh, typically if you want to launch it uh, through, a, uh, through a VM, uh, even if you want to use the cloud, typically it takes couple of minutes to launch the whole thing, even if you have done lot of automation, uh, be it with Chef Puppet, it still takes time. Here, we were able to do that within few seconds, in fact. 
So, the whole service was brought up in couple of seconds and rollback of the application was also easier. I mean it was very easy because we could not only we could promote a change, we could also roll back the change. The versions were preserved because we were using a git kind of a repository and docker provided repository and so we were able to do the rollback. So far, so good. So, now we come back to the topic. Uh, how does this fit into the overall DevOps scenario? Certainly, it does provide a very clean separation between the development as well as operations. Dependencies, whatever are there from a development perspective, you can capture that in the container itself. And as far as the ops job is concerned, it is much easier to deploy those containers. Uh, there is other thing, we talk about immutable infrastructure. I mean, there has been a lot of uh, literature available on the net, uh, which uh, you know, talks about immutable infrastructure, where you really do not change anything in the production. You only rebuild it. With Docker, it is possible. Uh, where you can rebuild it using the Docker file, or you can just deploy it. So, nothing actually changes in the production. I, I just want to, uh, know, uh, though uh, I said nothing changes in the production, Docker does provide a facility where you can apply some patches, uh, but then you will have to commit those changes again into the new image. So, it is, it is possible, it is mutable to a smaller extent, but not really, uh, you know, uh, you will have to do a lot of heavy work. So, that is one. It is also suitable for a micro uh, microservices architecture pattern. Uh, when we talk about DevOps, I think the microservices will also come into picture. This is something like you create services which are kind of independent of each other. When we talk about microservices, it may also lead to the heterogeneous environments because it allows you to you know, uh, create those services with different technologies and Docker will actually fit into this because each container can have its own thing. The last uh, last uh, thing, last point I wanted to also highlight. There is absolutely no scope for, no, it ran on my machine, but I do not know what, why it is not running on product, in production. You can just take that Docker image. If it is running on your machine, it will certainly run on any of those uh, uh, infrastructures as long as they are supporting Linux. So, there is absolutely no way to give this kind of excuse that it does not run in production, but it runs in my development environment. So, uh, if we look at it, these are all good points uh, we talk, uh, had talked about. Uh, now, how does it actually fits into the overall philosophy? Uh, uh, there could be a differing, uh, differing opinions whether you know, we should talk about Kanban, whether we should talk about uh, you know, how to reduce work in progress. That is also part of a DevOps philosophy. So, Docker essentially fits into that also. Uh, you do not really uh, uh, have too much of application level dependencies. You can, because many times you see there is a lot of backlog because there are lot of dependencies on the application. You cannot really move those applications into production. So, Docker will essentially address that. Now, before we actually jump into adopting Docker, I think there are certain things that we must take into account. There is a, one is the governance aspect. Now, what happens here is Though Docker provides you a kind of a base image, a developer can actually create its, his own image. He can have his own, own things built on that. Now, there is, this is something that I think we need to actually take into account before we do a kind of a, a adoption in an enterprise. What the governance aspect has to be looked at. Uh, we, we, we must look at how do we con, I mean, control, con, control may not be a uh, right word, but how do we actually put some kind of a responsibility uh, to use those uh, base images or create new images, create new certified images. So, there, uh, that, that aspect has to be looked at. The other aspect is orchestration, fine, I am able to launch the container, but how do I actually scale up and how do I launch different containers? Uh, if I want to look at it from a production scenario. How do I do my kind of a blue-green deployment? 
So, there is something required for orchestration and I think the current tools or technologies uh, will certainly are trying to address that orchestration thing. Uh, Google has Kubernetes, there are other, other tools that are also trying to support containerization for orchestration. So, even though we bring Docker into a play, the configuration management tools still has a role to play because there will be some small changes that are still required. So, we will have to take that into account. Docker is not going to take that away from them. Other thing that we had to look at it is non-homogeneous environments. Essentially, if you are an enterprise, I think we will have to look at it. Do you want to really promote a mix of environments? Just because Docker has the ability, anybody can create that. So, again it comes back to the governance aspect. How do we actually control that? How do we no, how do we really manage that kind of thing without impacting uh, you know, other, other applications. The last point also I want to uh, mention from an enterprise perspective is because Docker allows you to do this kind of a containerization, uh, we will have to look at the aspect of a technology heterogeneity versus standardization. Uh, when I say standardization, not necessarily uh, we are talking about a golden image or a fixed standard, but we should not end up having a technology date maybe few years down the line. We should not be you know, having too much of too many versions of the same libraries or maybe the things that are getting upset. So, how, how do you manage that? So, I think those are some of the things that we must look at both before we actually get into widespread adoption. So, those are the things that I wanted to cover in this presentation. So, if there are any questions, I will be happy to take. Thank you, sir. Any questions? All right. I am uh, Krishna Khan from Infosys. Yeah. So, how do you see uh, Docker applicable for uh, putting database inside containers and also for performance testing scenarios. Whether will it be able to simulate that kind of capacity? Uh, okay. Uh, I think it's the ecosystem is still building up. I, I would not say that uh, no, it is all uh, everything is there. Uh, if you want to look at it from a storage perspective, finally you need a persistent storage which will be attached to your host system or on a cloud it may be a uh, your blob storage. right? Uh, Yes, but you can run database server. That's uh, that's not not an issue. But at least I have not seen an instance yet, okay, where you know you are putting that kind of a work. Yeah. I, I think it's little too early at this stage to comment whether you no know, it will work, whether it will not work. Uh, there there are uh, data points available uh, from IBM on you know, what is the performance and all that. Uh, but I think we we still do not have enough. Uh, enough proof to say that yes, this is the way it will. For application yes, I mean definitely it will help. Database side I, I will have to look at it because it is a slightly different way of looking at it. So, it is a cultural change also. And uh, if you really look at it from a database perspective, even uh, uh, certain things like let us say Oracle RSE, you know, they are not supported on even on a normal <laughs> virtualized environment. So, we will have to see. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. To present a momento and thank you, I would like to request Mr. K. Chandra HCL to kindly come on the stage. K. Chandra HCL. A warm welcome to you also, sir. Requesting you to thank the speaker with the momento and the bouquet. Thanks to your speaker and thank you Mr. Chandra. Kindly take your seat sir.